go. Cleveland uh, hosting Chicago here. Look ahead was Cleveland minus three. And we've seen a slight move now, um, but not a huge move off the key number, but just a little bit of fluctuation there towards the dog. Bears coming off that impressive win, 28-13 over the Lions. They were a three-point home dog. They're now 4-0-1 against the number in their last five games. 6-2-2 against the spread in their last 10. Chicago definitely an overachieving team. Browns coming off that a close, tight win over Jacksonville at home. They won it by four. The spread was two, two and a half. Of course, the two-point conversion by uh, Doug Peterson at the end. Controversial to some, but I'm sure this panel will agree that was the right move. They didn't get it. And um, unfortunately, that's why uh, Jacksonville didn't cover that game. Cleveland did. Now Joe Flacco, the starter for the rest of the year. And Chris, do you think that is a uh, signal to buy on the Browns with Flacco under center this week? You know, I, I just worry about his offensive line protection because he's, you know, he's about as mobile as the goalpost. So uh, that's my concern. And, and, and there's just always added injuries. I don't know how uh, Stefanski is able to coach this team through all the obstacles with injuries that they've had all year. Uh, they have t- they lost two more players again, and somehow they're doing it with smoke and mirrors. The, the, but Chicago's defense showed up as number one on my list, I believe, again. Yeah, they're back up wow. to the number one defense. You have to take that with a grain of salt a little bit because they have had some weak opponents. Uh, uh, so, yeah. But nevertheless, they're, they play entirely different at home. They're much stronger at home. I like the veteran leadership uh, of Flock, Flacco. I think uh, that's probably a calming force with the team. Uh, that he's not going to make stupid mistakes, uh, except something like he did with that pop-up against the Rams. But other than that, he was very good. Uh, I think the the Bears have been playing a little bit over their head. Uh, I think that they've been in some good matchups, and I think they're they're going to find it much more difficult to move the ball. They're not going to be able to to. They matched up really well against the Lions last week, and uh, they've had some good matchups uh, themselves. And as well as that, they as they've been playing. They just really aren't in the same class as the Browns, and all we're doing is asking the Browns to basically win the game. So I'm going to just lay the minus three with the Browns, and uh, I think that they'll win and cover. I actually have the teams close to the same class. I only have the Browns half a point better. A lot of that is I don't share the optimism about Joe Flacco. I Fully agree he's performed better than I expected. I still think he's a walking corpse, and I'm not sure he can even walk anymore. And I think eventually we're going to see a couple strip sacks, and the real Joe Flacco will show himself. And he's a former gunslinger, so he can't help but throw the ball down the field and get picked. Um, So why am I not on the Bears? Well, full disclosure, I bet the Bears plus three and a half, and I just don't want to give out plus three. And so, you know, a little discipline can be a good thing. So I will lean the opposite way here, even a three. Yeah, good discipline. Um, Great point by Chris Lawrence. Bears lost Yannick Ngakwe this week. Um, So a little notch against, and you can argue how effective he's been. He's still a really good player that the defense, uh, the offense has to scheme for. Um, and congrats to INFJ Tyrone, who's now a BetUS superfan. I just saw that pop up in the uh, chat there. So um, another superfan crosses the picket line. We appreciate your uh, patronage, my friend. Um, the only play in this game officially is Chris laying the three with the Browns um, as they host Chicago this week. Let's- 